Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to this uh, webinar on statistical tools. Um, we have here Rojing Wong, uh, Jean-Louis Lafont, and Kirk Raymond, all representing ISTA committees. Um, before we start, maybe just a quick, um, quick um, reminder on everything. There is a box to put questions. Um, please use that to ask any questions, which we will be able to answer at the end of this session. First of all, I would like to ask Ru Jing, uh, Ru Jing Wang. She is um, from Purity Committee. She is the chair of the Purity Committee of ISTA and also representing CFIA of Canada. She's located in Saskatoon and she will start uh, a short presentation, a short introduction into the topic. Okay. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Uh, I'm muted or unmuted. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, uh, I'm very glad uh, we have a statistical committee to statistician help us to develop a tool and a method to developing working sample weight. Um, so uh, before they start their uh, presentation and show the great tool we have now, uh, so I just uh, gave a little bit of background uh, explanation. Um, so working sample weight. Um, um, yeah, I just need to show, see myself the screen. Um, workers, working sample weight is part of the uh, uh, in a ISTA rules. Uh, in chapter two, you can see my screen. Um, there is a minimum submitted sample. Then there have a minimum purity analysis uh, sample weight, and there have a minimum other seeds determination by number weight. Um, so you can see there, I just uh, screenshot some examples, a different species have different weight and the working weight is almost uh, uh, 10 times uh, larger for other seed determination than purity. But you also can see submitted sample weight have some kind of relation with the other seed determine, determination weight. Then different species have different weight. Um, have you ever wondering why we have different weight for different species? Um, so with um, the new crop or new species is became uh, more in international trade so more species may need to add to this table and also uh, with this data sometimes we find a new varieties or new type of varieties may not um, have the same weight as the current uh, is the rule shows so sometimes the weight might need to be uh, revised. So for all that reason, then sometimes we have to make decision what is working weight. And also the working weight um, is part of the method for purity analysis and for other seed determination. So, um, so it's a long time ago, a statistician uh, developed a, um, determination how we determine the working weight uh, in principle most of the species based on two uh, 2500 seeds for purity 25,000 seeds for other seed determination so um, because it's a part of the purity analysis and other seed determination method so the working weight will impact testing accuracy and sometimes people just feel um, uh, they have allowance 
uh, you can do a reduced test or different weight, and you must have justified reason because the testing working weight going to impact your result. Um, the ISTA handbook show up, showed how the working weight is, um, is determined. Uh, then uh, there is a gap uh, we kind of discovered when people propose new species to be added to table 2C. Um, many uh, um, proposal with different format, different way of data collection, and people need some kind of guidance, and also we need a standard method, so then we can do evaluation, fairly um, transparent evaluation when different author uh, propose the method change. So as a purity committee, we can do a evaluation. So currently we don't have that method be outlined. Um, and also we hope whatever the method um, proposed or whatever the data you provided, we feel there um, uh, it's best to have it's a scientific back um, support and uh, background to support your data collection. So then we are more confident about your data collected to support your rule proposal or changes to table to see. Um, and also over time, we hope this kind of a standard method can help us to compare uh, over time, different uh, um, time we proposed working weight, what was changed. Uh, it's not method, it, it could be uh, the data collection or the um, variety changed. Um, so uh, just in summary, the tool we developed, the intention is to provide a standard uh, method to determine the working weight, and that can be used for adding new species to table to C, or um, sometimes uh, there may be new species or may sub uh, type of that species, and also it can be used for amend for existing uh, species. So that is uh, the background, why we need have this kind of uh, tool to be used, and we will expect it um, if in the future this proposal uh, accepted um, in this year's proposal, then in future the data collection and um, the data uh, will be used as tool uh, to be presented for any new species to be added to table 2C. So that is a brief background. So that's the end of my introduction. Then goes to um, others, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Rosing. Thank you for setting the scene for us. Um, we hand now over for the for the real work um, to Jean-Li Lafont. Jean-Li, everybody probably knows you, but um, not in your new role. Everybody knows you were the chair of the statistics committee. That is now Kirk, and he will join us um, after your talk as well. Um, you are now the vice chair, and we are very happy that you are still uh, with us and um, we can get hold of your knowledge inside the ISTA community. So it's new statistical tools for determining working sample weight to amend table to see of the ISTA rules. Jean-Louis, please go ahead. Thank, thank you uh, and thank you, Roger, for the, for the introduction and the background. So it's my pleasure to, to talk about the, the statistical tools we we have developed for determining working sample weight so it's uh, the, uh, the result of uh, collaborative work and eh? many people were involved in the project so you have the list of people so these people are coming from diver different uh, ISTA technical committees such as the purity committee and the bulking sampling committee and the statistics committee Okay, so here is the outline of the presentation. Uh, first, uh, I will talk about the principles that guided uh, 
us to for 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 developing the the tool uh, then i will go through details regarding the calculations which are implemented in a excel calculator uh, that uh, kirk remund will uh, will de demonstrate and he will give you also an overview of this calculator okay about the principles uh, that guided us for developing the statistical tool. So first we start with um, a population uh, of different 100 seed weights. Uh, this is for one given species and uh, we include all possible varieties, all possible labs making the measurements, all the possible measurements made by the labs different seed lots for the different varieties etc so it's a big population and we are making an assumption which is a reasonable one which is that these 100 seed weights are normally distributed with a mean m and a variance sigma square so in statistics we have a, a nice property if you have a, a distribution variable y distributed normally with mean m and variance sigma square then if you multiply this variable by a constant k this new variable is also normally distributed with a mean equal to k times the mean of the original distribution and with a variance equal to the square of k times the variance of the original distribution for our problem, we will use this nice property to uh, considering k equal 25 and k equal to 250 to be able to derive the 2500 and 25,000 uh, 25, seeds weight, uh, which, which is uh, our objective as uh, stated by Roger. Okay, so the distribution of this, for example, 2,500 way, seed weights are also, is also a normal distribution, but with a, a mean equal to Km, uh, m being the mean of the original distribution and variance equal to k square of the sigma square, sigma square being the variance of the original distribution. Then you have this distribution here and we will consider the 0 0.95 quantile and uh, with this 0 0.95 quantile uh, taking it as a, the weight to, to be recommended in, in the ISTA rules we will ensure that we are 95% confident to have at least 2,500 or 25,000 seeds in a random sample okay so this is the general principle now we have a problem how to estimate the mean and the variance of the original distribution so for this we are recommending to to set up an experiment and we are proposing two experiment designs uh, with the aim to capture all the possible source of variation at its best so these are the two experiments we are uh, suggesting. Uh, the first experiment is a two-way nested design. I mean, the, the varieties and the lots related to the varieties are not the same over the, the labs. And for the second experiment, it's a two-way cross design. Here, the varieties and the lots are uh, identical for all the labs. We are also giving some recommendations regarding the number of varieties, the number of seed lots, the number of measurements per uh, lab by lot combination. Uh, also a recommendation regarding the number of labs which needs to be involved in these experiments so that we can get uh, accurate estimates of the mean and the variance. Okay. So now we have collected the data from one of the two experiments and we will analyze this data by fitting a random effects model. So these are the uh, 
statistical models fitted for the two experiments. So if I consider, for example, experiment design two, you have a lab effect, lot effect, lab by lot interaction effect, and residuals. And associated to these effects, you have variances, which are called variance components. Okay? So the game will be to estimate the general mean after fitting the, the model to the data collected and to estimate the variance component. And from that, we will get an estimate of M and an estimate of the variance of the original distribution, which is the sum of the variance of the variance components. Okay, That way, we are <coughs> capturing as, as best as we can all the source of variation we can have for one and with silhouette. Okay. Now, uh, this is for the principle. Eh? Uh, now I will give you details on the computations. First thing that uh, we implemented in, in the calculator, it's um, a way to, to clean the data. And uh, for that, uh, we, we use the groups method for outlier detection, which is a widely used method uh, in, uh, by laboratories uh, for uh, analyzing their data. So let me give you a, a quick refresher on the groups method, uh, which is implemented in the calculator. Suppose here you have eight measurements by uh, given lab for a specific seed lot. <coughs> and the question is, is there any outlier values in this uh, in this sample of eight values. So for the group's method, first we compute the mean and the, and the standard deviation. Having the mean and the standard deviation, we compute the absolute difference with the mean divided by the standard deviation. This is this column Ti, okay? And then if Ti is greater than a critical value De, uh, determined by groups, uh, then the corresponding uh, measurement will be considered as an outlier. So uh, this is a table of the criti group's critical values for the 5% level of significance. So you enter into the table uh, using the sample size. So sample size in our example is 8. So the critical value is 2.13. And we see that there is one TI value which is above 213. So the corresponding measurement, 0 0.26, is considered as an outlier. And you can see eh, 0 0.26 is very different from the majority of the measurements, which are uh, close to 0 0.4. Okay? So this is uh, something which is implemented in the calculator. Um, we are not using the group's critical uh, table of critical values. We are, we are generating dynamically these critical values because we, you can derive these critical values from the student distribution. And this is implemented uh, in Excel. Uh, and uh, the statistics committee has developed uh, a small calculator for determining uh, these group's critical value for any level of significance and any sample size in the calculator, the level of significance we are considering will be 5%. Okay. Now, uh, once we have cleaned the data, we are happy with the data, we have to fit the uh, random effects model, okay, to get the variance components. And there are many methods to, to get estimates of variance components. ANOVA methods, uh, maximum likelihood method, restricting maximum likelihood methods, etc. So it's very technical, but there are plenty of methods. And there is one method which is used uh, routinely today in, in the different statistical software, uh, which is the Remel method. Uh, the problem with this method is that it requires heavy computations uh, and implementing this method in Excel uh, might be challenging. Okay, So what uh, we have decided is to use uh, a method, an ANOVA-based method, Anderson method one, uh, to 
estimate the variance components. And uh, this method is nice because it works on unbalanced data. And also it provides exactly the same estimates of the variance components than the one estimated using the reference uh, method ML, so we, we, which is a, a nice property. Okay, for unbalanced data, you have some slight difference with the Remel method, but uh, the estimates are very close. So, uh, in details, uh, you have textbooks where you have uh, you have the details uh, of the Henderson method one. Uh, for example, you have this group, this book from Seal and Hall from 1992, where you have the details of all the computations. And this is really what we have implemented in the calculator. Now to, to finish with, with my part, um, what uh, the calculator is delivering is uh, 2,500 or 25,000, uh, 25,000, sorry, I have problems with, with, uh, with the numbers in English, 25,000, a seed weight, okay? Uh, but there is, for the reporting in ISTA rules, there is um, uh, some rules regarding the rounding. If the weight is less than one gram, we use two decimals. If the weight is between one gram and five grams, we use one decimal. And if the weight is greater than five grams, we uh, round it to the nearest integer. Okay, so this is uh, what will be reported in the calculator. And now uh, I, I give it over Kirk, uh, who will give you an overview of the calculator and also provide a demo of the calculator. Kirk, it's your, your turn. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Jean-Louis. Um, yeah, so the, the tool which I will demo, I'll demo in just a moment, but just a few uh, additional slides here. Uh, the, in the tool, just like the other tools that uh, Jean-Louis and I have, have provided the, this community over the years, there's a, a, a page on the front that gives you the, the details, really a lot of the details of what Jean-Louis has already gone through. To give you an idea of the different types of designs you could use, that the nested design on the left or the cross design on the right. Uh, a lot of the, the mathematical formulation there. So everything's there uh, to, uh, to to give you the theoretical basis for uh, these these calculations. That's it's a, it's a nice addition there. And then on the right is is the uh, the sheet. Uh, all of the yellow cells are inputs. The, these are things that you can change that you can uh, for the calculations and then everything else are the the calculations themselves. Um, yeah, the, the sheets is, uh, is is protected, but it's not password protected. So we, we did the protection just so that you know you don't accidentally change some of the formulas and such. Uh, but but you could uh, there there isn't a password protection on there, so you could actually go in and actually see the formulas um, if you choose. Another really important point: uh, there's some clever uh, conditional formatting that Jean Louis used to show outliers. So to keep from from uh, uh, Having issues with with changing this conditional formatting, always make sure that you use uh, as you're bringing data in into the yellow fields where you're adding these hundred seed weights. You know, make sure that you uh, use the copy paste option. Um, you know, where where you're doing paste uh, the the special and then values. If you just do a regular copy paste, then you'll you'll disrupt that conditional formatting. So that's an important point. And it actually will, will change some of the, uh, the formatting for those outliers and, and maybe a lot, some things will show up as outliers that shouldn't be. So again, yeah, please remember to use that paste special values option within Excel. Um, another thing you'll notice over on the right is, is, is uh, if, you, if you don't meet some of the, the guidance that, that Jean-Louis had articulated, uh, you know, for example, we mentioned that we have a minimum of uh, six lots are needed for this, this type of thing, this is for the, the uh, cross-classification design, um, it, will, it will alert you of that, let you know if you haven't met the, the right number of lots, the right number of laboratories. Also, if you didn't do the rounding appropriately uh, in accordance with the ISTA guidelines, it will give you a, a red warning. Um, another thing you'll notice, and I'll demonstrate this live for you in the tool, uh, down in the 100 seed weights, 
uh, they'll sh if they show up red, that means that they uh, are outliers based on that Grubbs test that Jean-Louis had, 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 uh, had, had demonstrated for us. So, okay, the next slide. So while we don't recommend the use of the calculator uh, for a single laboratory, um, the calculator will still work. I guess there are some instances, especially, you know, as, as Rogine, the purity committee and the statistics committee maybe give you some, some exception uh, where we maybe for particular species because of some, some issue uh, uh, and maybe, one, you know, one lab is used on, on exception, the calculator will work. It will work for a one lab case and I'll demonstrate that as well. Um, you can get the uh, that random effects model with the, the general mean, you're bringing in a lot of effect and the residual only, um, rather than bringing in some of those other random effects that I will, that I will show you in, in a moment. Um, and this, this is what the output looks like. You'll notice that it gives you the, uh, the general mean. <clears throat> it also, and that would be, that would be KM. And, uh, and then it also gives you the lot variance and the residual variance, but it does not give you a lab variance nor a lab by uh, lot variance because we only have a single lab. So those, those, those are not estimable. Um, also, there's the, uh, we, we did some, some uh, Jean-Louis did some validation to show that indeed this Henderson method is giving good estimates, these variance components. He did some comparison with Remel estimates and, and the program R. And you can see that there's, uh, in this case where we have, we have balance, you know, you have, the, you have equality. The, the, the Henderson estimates are Remel estimates. If you have some imbalance, they won't be equal, but they'll be very comparable. And so there, there we get the, uh, and I apologize, I think I said wrong, uh, that general means the M, this, this 2,500 seed weight down below, that would be the KM for both, uh, whether K is equal to 25 or 250 for both of two, 2,500 seed weight and the, two, and the uh, 25,000 seed weight. Okay, um, let's see, is there one more slide, John? Okay, we're gonna go to the demo now. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and Karen, if I could share my screen. We will go to the demo. All right, just one moment. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to go to the website, the ISTA website to show you where you can get access to these uh, to this nice tool. So here I've entered into the uh, the ISTA website. Uh, I'm going to seedtest.org. We go to statistics or technical committees and click on technical committees. You can actually get to the tool in one of two ways. So uh, it's really nice. The secretary it has the access to the uh, the tool on the purity committee web committee web page on uh, for Rogine's committee and you can see you can get to it right here if you scroll down there it is calculator for adding weights uh, working weights to table 2c of the ISTA rules also I'm going to back up one and you can also get it within the uh, statistics committee as well and uh, scrolling down here's where you can get access to the uh, to the calculator there's also, um, you know, other tools that we have there that are available from the from the statistics committee, including seed calc, there's a box plot macro that Jean-Louis provided, and, and several other tools. So, a lot of nice uh, tools available on the uh, on the uh, ISTA website. Um, so I clicked on on that hyperlink, and here's how you would do the download right here. Here's a little description that uh, Rogine and Jean-Louis and I put together of the tool, and then you can download right here. Okay, so let's have a look at the tool. All right. Um, all right, so here's here's a live version of the tool that, that I'll do some demonstration. But the first thing I'd like to show as well, just to give you some confidence uh, for the these other types of, for, for the different types of design, both the nested design, again, the nested design, meaning that you have different lots being evaluated by each laboratory. Maybe there's some, some concern about, we, we can't transfer seed uh, across between labs. So it gives you that, fle gives, uh, that flexibility to be able to 
to to calculate these uh, these minimum seed weights in that situation where uh, each lab will look at different seed lots. So that's that's the, this this first design. Um, you'll notice these variance components match up well with the uh, the restricted maximum likelihood variance components within um, uh, with, with, with that are calculated by R. Here we don't have exact equality because I actually introduced some some imbalance. Okay, but you'll notice that they're quite comparable, very very, very similar, even in the, in the in the presence of imbalance. Uh, we also have the tab here. Well, we we also show the case here where we have the same seed lots evaluated by each laboratory. And again, we show these Remel variance component estimates to show that, that you have, that they're very, very comparable. Um, and in the case where you have balance, meaning that you don't have any, you have, you don't have any, in, 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 any inequality in the, the number of reps or the number of batches for, for, uh, for each of the labs. Um, you know, we have, uh, we have equality with balance and then we have very comparable when we have imbalance. All right. Um, so that's what we're showing. I'm going to demonstrate uh, actually adding data doing the pace special option for design one, the case where we have different lots for each laboratory. But just looking just to, to show you uh, a little bit of how we do things, you can see that uh, we've provided, you can actually add as many as, uh, this is very extreme, but as many as 50 lots for a given laboratory. It gives you flexibility there. And then as well as you can have, you know, many, several laboratories. I think uh, we're, we're, we're showing here a maximum of eight laboratories with, with, the with the calculation. And of course the ISTA recommendation is, you know, to have, you know, uh, six, at least six, um laboratories involved with these with these studies um here i'm just showing just for the ease of, of demonstration i'm just showing uh you know we we, we have uh, the same seven seed lots have gone to two different laboratories and we have the 100 seed weights again the recommended a minimum of, of 100 or excuse me of eight 100 seed weights for each of those each of those batches so we have those same seven batches in this case going to each each of those two laboratories. On the, the nested design or the design where we have different lots within each laboratory, you notice that we put the, the lots, 100 seed weights in different columns. So for laboratory one, we have batches one through three, there's 100 seed weights. For laboratory two, we have three different batches. And so we're putting them in the different columns. So for bad lab two, they, they are, uh, we're bringing in the data for lot, lots four, five, and six. Uh, also note that these are based on the uh, the guidelines that Rogine and, and her committee and the statistics committee put together. Um, we're, we're asking for a, a, a representation across different varieties as well. We don't indicate that here, but that is implied that, that these are coming from uh, uh, some from different uh, different uh, varieties within that species. Okay. Um, for laboratory three, there we go, we have lots seven through nine, okay? And so when we put them in the different columns, this tells the calc this tells Excel and the, and the calculations that, ah, this is the nested design. This is from design one versus the, the other design where we have um, the same lots going to each laboratory. And there we go, laboratory four, we're showing uh, lots, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, um, just to go back, just for, for clarity, I hope uh, you can see that in the, if we have the, uh, for laboratories one and two, if you have uh, 100 seed weights in the same column, so for both laboratory one and laboratory two, you have 100 seed weights for lots one through seven uh, showing up for both lab, labs, and that says, that tells, uh, this tool, oh, this is a cross classification. We have the same lots going to each laboratory. And so it will calculate this additional variance component for the lab by lot interaction. Where you'll notice over here for the nest design, that variance component is missing because we don't have that cross classification. Okay. But in either instance, it will do those calculations correctly according to the, um, the formulas that Jean Louis had shared to, to give you. Uh, 
conf you know, confidently give you um, your 2,500 seed weight and your 2,000 or 25,000 seed weight, and also applying that rounding decision. Okay, um, so I'm going to just demonstrate a copy paste, how we do the special copy paste just for a moment. Let me uh, pull up this other sheet that I've prepared. So here we have that same data, and I, we have already entered in data for labs one through three. I have not entered in data for lab four, so let's do that together here. So let me grab it here from this other sheet. I'm copying the data, and I'm bringing it in here. I need to make sure I'm going to go to the to uh, lot number ten because lot seven through nine were for laboratory three. Or for laboratory four, I have lots 10 through 12. So I'm going to copy right here. So I'm going to put my cursor right here under the first rep for laboratory four for lot 10. I'm going to the, the paste option, but I'm going to do a paste values. Okay. And click on that and bring in that data. So now we have brought in data for four laboratories. Um, if you notice here, we do have uh, an outlier, it's been highlighted in red. Using that conditional formatting from the Grubbs test saying that oh, 4.5 is very large for this particular lot. And if you look at the other 100 seed weights, uh, yes, indeed, this 4.5 looks, looks big. Even visually, you can see it looks higher than the others. So what, what you can do as users, you can just suppress that. Basically, I'm just going to delete that. And it will adjust the calculations uh, with, with the omission of that outlier. Again, we, uh, the, the, this calculator handles imbalance very well. So uh, like I can uh, go ahead and remove some other values here. Let's take out some other ones. You know, let's say there are some issues and, and, and we weren't able to get those 100 seed weights. We can still make the calculation. I'll remove some others down here as well. So it's still, still working just fine. Uh, I'll enter in another value. Let's put in a, a small value this time, 2.5. Oh, and that, that one shows up as being an outlier. So that, that conditional formatting automatically does the calculation uh, for that Grubbs test. 3.5, this one's okay. All right. Um, you notice up here the, uh, the, the, uh, the warnings. So we only have uh, 100 seed weights for four laboratories. So it's, it's telling us that oh, we only have uh, we do not have enough, uh, according to the recommendation, it's the recommendation, we don't have enough laboratories represented. It gives you the total number of observations. We do have 12 lots, which meets the recommendation, so we don't see the, the flag there. I'm going to enter in, uh, using those rounding rules, I'm going to uh, put a decision in here of 140, well, you can see I put 146, I'm okay. If I put in, uh, let's see if I put in 140, then I'm going to get the, uh, the the warning because I didn't follow the rounding rule. And likewise, down here, if I put in 1400, I'm going to get the the warning as, as well. So, um, there's other fields in here. You can enter in, uh, you know, the, the the submitter name, the lab, uh, the lab's full name, uh, maybe ISFA codes, contact other information that that may be used if you're going to use this as as part of a report. Um, well, that um, concludes the demonstration. Maybe I can ask Jean Louis. Is there anything else that you would like to for me to show Jean Louis, uh, the group, uh, and the and this and the calculator, before we go to back to Andreas and questions? No, no, nothing to add. Thank you, Pierre. Okay. All right. So I, I guess we give the floor back to you, Andreas and, and Rogine, for uh, maybe some questions. Yes, the point is maybe. Thank you very much for the for the very nice and comprehensive presentation, and um, also for um, giving us an insight on how the tool works. There was one question coming up: if the presentation could be shared, but I understood, John Louis, that the presentation or a summary of the presentation is part of the tool, which is on the WISTA website. Um, and um, that is an answer, and um, it was uh, Rojing who um, 
put the link in the chat box so everybody who likes to have a quick summary of this presentation of Jean-Louis can go to the uh, website. Uh, now I have two questions. One, one from Didier. This is a nice software, but what are the recommendations of Purity and Statistic Committee for large seats? Currently, there is a maximum limit of one kilo for purity and other seed determination weight for sample uh, Pisum sativum or say mice, nine hundred gram for purity and one kilogram for OSD, uh, or Vicia Faba, one kilogram for purity or OSD. Does the software limit to one kilogram the maximum weight? Is reliable to keep these maximum limits of one kilogram? Long question. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, probably I go first. Um, I think this tool is a very, the first one we're dealing with uh, many uh, factors. Uh, I don't think it will be stand still. Uh, with some issues identified, we definitely can improve it. Uh, the artificial limitation of one kilo uh, for large seed is on ISTA rules. Um, I definitely believe um, John Louis and uh, Kirk will look into it. So I'm not sure currently we have built in or not. So give it to John Louis and Kirk. What I can answer is that, uh, well, it's the limitation is in the ISTA rules. It's not part of the tool. I mean, uh, if you want to increase uh, this one kilogram, I mean, uh, well, you have to discuss with the bulking and sampling committee or other committees, I don't know. But, uh, well, the tool can, can go over one kilogram, eh? but uh, if, mm -hmm. if the recommendation is not to go over one kilogram because of some practical issues, etc., uh, well, statistically, yeah. we could not do anything. Yeah, I, I think the tool provide the scientific background. Then we leave the decision box. So that decision means to have other factor uh, can play to make the final decision. Yeah, I hope this answer your questions. Yeah, then DDA knows how to reach you. I've got the opposite question from uh, Sergio. Sergio asked them if I have really seed lot only of about thousand seeds how can i do it um, <laughs> yeah so uh, from my um technical committee perspective uh your lots only have thousand seeds um but it doesn't mean um I think you, so basically we, when we do any experiment, you have to have sufficient uh, materials. So that means uh, I'm not sure you, you don't have enough material is because in a world only thousand seed or it just because you don't have more than um, the needed seeds. Um, so to me, that is a preparation stage. Um, I understand that sometimes people say, yeah, the, the species have a very limited variety. Uh, but when you have only variety in a world, you still can have different year and different location production. You can have different laws. Um, but if you only have thousand seeds, so to me, uh, in general, you don't have enough material to contact this determination. Okay, but Sergio is also sending his very best compliments for the clear presentation to all of you. Well, that's great. Thank you. And I, I really uh, appreciate the uh, statistical committee. They come up with this tool from the end user purity committee. Um, the tool is very user friendly. They, they pr and also provide flexibility. Like they gave design previously, I think maybe the design has to be have same lots. So they 
considered all possible scenarios. They gave two type of design. If you don't have lots, then they, they have, uh, um, you can use different lots. Um, so they gave more flexibility there and very user friendly. And of course, it's very solid, based on very solid provide experiment design, outlier removal, um, and also provide reason. You can look at the parameter you want to estimate and give warnings. All those kind of thing is very friend, user friendly. So I just want to compliment statistical committee and John Louis and Kirk. They did a great work. Also, Elisa from the Forest Seed Committee is saying thank you very much. Very nice tool. I think it will be very useful for the Forest Seed and Shrub Committee. Great. I think may maybe a comment to add to what Rogin had, had said is, is Jean Louis and I, and, and he, uh, by the way, I'll just give credit where credit's due. Jean Louis uh, led this effort. He was he was key in developing the theory, and so thanks, Jean Louis. Um, that there is very uh, um this this is solid theoretically uh, if uh, i think using this tool using this approach you can be confident that the uh the fight the 2500 seed weight the the, the 25000 seed weight for other seed determination you can be confident going forward that that you would meet using that that 95th quantile approach that jean Lee outlined you can be very confident that that you will using this minimum weight you will meet those requirements with very high confidence and uh more so than, than maybe some other approaches that, that are out there, so. Uh, and, and I want to, to add something regarding uh, development of statistical tools. So uh, our objective uh, in the statistics committee and uh, with all the members is to develop more and more tools on Excel because, uh, well, Excel is used by a lot of people. Uh, it's user-friendly. And uh, really, our objective is to well to continue to to, to develop uh, on Excel because this is a, a platform which is uh, used widely by seed analysts and by laboratories. As um, from Maabt El Fata, um, thank you for this presentation. And we need uh, to add new species to table to see because they often come. Uh, for testing in our laboratories like Lipidum sativum or Ocinum basilicum and the whole citrus family is not found on table two, three, two C on the rules. If we can add it to. Yeah. yeah I, I that, think. That's more comment, yes. Yeah, I think that is a purpose. We want to facilitate um people adding new species and many people commented that they want to add new species um they feel they are not um have sufficient um understanding how to add to it so we are on the way to provide uh guidance to provide standard tools and just make your proposal is much easier so this is at least a very critical step uh, Statistical committee, committee developed this tool. So I hope that could help you to add new species to it. And I'm just rethink about the other question. They don't have enough seeds. Um, so uh, for table to see, and uh, if anybody from Balkan sampling committee, um, so any species add to as table to see, the purpose is to do international trade, use ISTA certificate. Um, so if you don't have enough seed, you you just ask yourself, is that internationally trade? Is that a rare species just being used by your local? Um, so that could be the question you ask yourself. But if the species in a uh, using is the orange certificate uh, need to be tested and uh, trade internationally, so this is a tool to help you add that species to the table to see um yes, right I, I think i think it as as it came from sergio it was um forest species and um forestry species and there yes you might not have um that many seed as um as for um 
a seed lot of their mice and um, that is um, probably the reason of the question and yes they are in international mm -hmm. trade more regional trade in a lot of cases but um, uh, crossing borders in that case as well yeah and i think thanks thanks Andreas, for that clarification because i think even in that instance i think in the subject the example was given as we had a thousand seeds well for that particular seed lot well if, if we and i know maybe maybe there be, could be some exceptions we look at this to see well maybe you have one lot of that you have you do have maybe five or six other lots of similar size you still could draw from that um, 800 seed working samples to, to get a, a, a 100 seed weight and so you, we could with some consideration maybe with the Vulcan sampling committee and purity committee and statistics committee there may be an opportunity still uh, to, to, to do to use this calculator do some of those uh, the needed calculations which we could do that on exception mm -hmm. yeah that's a good point as well yes i think your tool gave the replication normally is uh, eight replications so that means 800 seeds um but i i think your tool still could calculate if only have a four replication or something yes. um, the exception definitely can be specially considered Okay, thank you. Um, to this comment, Elisa is coming back. So you have the forest people on um, on the hook now. Um, if there's a local trade inside the country, we need to analyze them and we need to have the correct sample size as well. So that's, that's of course, it's true. So um, yeah, thank you. And um, uh, there was a, it's a slight correct collection. I think our colleague from Egypt, Mava Hassan, um, connected under the name Maha Abd El Fatah. And uh, the question before was coming from her, just ex as a clarification. Uh, two questions from, um, or two comments from uh, Dr. Sankaran from India. It's a tough topic for routine analysts to understand full. Still, thanks for the initiative of ISTA. And he is asking a manual on statistics and seed testing will be helpful. Do you have an, any tools which you could um, could let people know where they can get this information? Um, yeah, good. Yeah, very good question, Andreas. Yeah, we do. We do not have uh, today a uh, statistics handbook. We we do have. We've, as Jean Louis and I mentioned, you know, we've been trying to provide uh, tools with with some narrative in there to uh, uh, which would be you know very useful for, for for people for individuals. We look to make more uh, more more of these types of tools. That's the approach that we've we've taken. And Jean Louis, please please speak up. Uh, we I, I know also we're looking even. Uh, Jean Louis and I were going to be meeting and putting together some best practices uh, material. Uh, we were thinking mainly primarily to use that for members of our own committee and maybe some of the other technical committees than this stuff, but this could potentially be shared broader and it could even be an initial basis for a, a handbook. But we, uh, this is a good idea. Jean Louis, did you want to comment any more on that? Yeah, well, uh, having a handbook will need to be updated uh, regularly and yeah, because we are continuously developing uh, new approaches, etc. Yeah, because uh, we are making progress in the knowledge, in the science, etc. Uh, I agree, yeah, but uh, uh, one possibility, well, is to attend the ISTA annual meeting. Yeah, Kirk, we will talk about uh, what what we are doing, etc. So the, this is a, a way to, to get information, uh, attend this type of seminar. Uh, what I want to say is, it's not easy. Eh? Uh, what uh, statistic? I mean, I know when we we talk about mixed model, random effects model, it's difficult concept. Eh? But uh, um, yeah, well, uh, we, we we cannot avoid that because we want to good, to use good science, etc. So uh, handbook. Uh, well, uh, if you. Uh, there is one paper in STI about GMO testing. It's a kind of uh, a seed calcal book. Eh? Um, so if you look at the calculator that uh, Kirk demonstrated, I mean, the, the first uh, worksheet is really, uh, well, 
not an article, but uh, we, we are giving details about the computation, the models, etc. But I agree, it's, it's, it's difficult eh, for non-statisticians, so it's, it's difficult, but uh, yeah, uh, we, we, we don't have the choice. <laughs> <We don't. laughs> I mean, but what we are trying is to implement in Excel so that many, many people can, can, can use that. Yeah, thank you. You may also may, um, made a comment on the annual meeting, which will be from Monday, May 29 to Tuesday, Thursday, June 1. And um, there is on Wednesday, I saw a session um, two, and two hours or something like on mathematical modeling. I think you can say a few words more to that one in that case. Yes, yeah, this is, uh, thanks, Andreas. Yeah, neat opportunity. It's an open meeting uh, organized by Bert and the uh, Nice Technology Committee. And uh, but there'll be a lot of others of us participating. Jean Louis and I will be participating. Uh, uh, I have a colleague from, from Bayer that will be coming and making a presentation as well. But yeah, so it'll be a nice discussion. You, you could even come in and, and ask some of your questions there, but you can get an idea of some of the, so some of the thoughts, some of the uh, direction. That we're looking on how to use mathematical statistical model I mean, better within the ISTA community, within our technical committees, and advancing uh, tools and and uh, that, that that can be used by this this uh, great community. Uh, so yeah, thanks, Andreas, for bringing that up, and we invite you to uh, to come in and listen in, and and you have a chance to to uh, voice some questions, concerns you have there. Yeah, thank you. Which brings me to the point that um, I invite everybody, of course, to join the the um, annual meeting in Verona. It's um, in a very beautiful city, and um, we have a lot of good topics coming around there. There is also a, um, a, a seminar and on the 28th at the beginning on sustainability. So that is uh, something you could also look into and you can find all the information, uh, including the seminar program on the ISTA website. And you can find further information also here, um, the program for the seminar, which is um, um, on biodiversity and just need to find the resources, tools, and technologies to meet new challenges on the 29th of May. That's the Monday. Um, a very high qualified seminar. And we have a few people who are in the audience who will be giving presentations there. Um, that is um, uh, very, very good. And this mathematical modeling session on the 31st is also something, but you can find more information, as I said, on the ISTA website, www.ctest.org. This session was um, also recorded. We are at the end of this session. No further questions anymore, open questions. The session was recorded and it will be in a few days also available on the ISTA YouTube channel for everybody to look at it again. Or um, if you didn't understand a few things, um, in that case, I would have to look at it um, uh, from the morning hours to the evening um, because I'm not a good statistician. So, um, uh, but I think um, for everybody who wants to look at it again, um, maybe recover some of their, their questions they had and to get an explanation which they might have missed. Look at the ISTA YouTube channel and you will find it there. Um, on the other hand, all the participants, um, at least the two committee chairs, Roger and Kirk, have the email addresses, um, maybe also Jean-Louis, I'm not sure, on the ISTA website. Um, you can go there and find them and ask questions also directly if um, you did not come through here. But um, all questions we received were answered. Thank you very much, Roger. Thank you very much, Kirk and Jean-Louis, for this um, very comprehensive and beautiful um, presentation and for the tool. And we are exactly within the time frame um, 
have a good evening have a good day wherever you are in the world and um, enjoy and hope to see you all in verona in uh, a month's time thank you very much take Bye. care Bye. goodbye, goodbye.